What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 7.34 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, A fat wire radius A carries a constant current I, uniformly distributed over its cross-section. A narrow gap in the wire with VW, which is much less than A, forms a parallel plate capacitor as shown in the figure. Find the magnetic field in the gap at a distance s greater than a from the axis. Okay, so here let's first set up our problem. So this is your two fat wires of radius a. So here we're going to identify the axis. So this is now your axis. Okay, so because of this uh, condition, we're in the width is very small compared to the the width or the gap is very small compared to the width or the radius of the wire so that means the fringe effects at the edges of the wire or on the ends of the wire meaning the edges of the plates can uh, will be done okay so for a parallel plate capacitor the electric field will now be directed along this direction so let's call this the z direction so that means the electric field will be in this direction because this is your positive, uh, uh, positive uh, charge and this is your negative charge. Okay, so this is your electric field. So a parallel plate capacitor, the electric field would be equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught where sigma is the uh, surface charge density and epsilon naught is the per permittivity of free space and the direction of the electric field in this case would be along the z direction so that would be your z hats okay so if we're going to set our ampere loop to get the magnetic field in the gap we set the ampere loop like this which is a circular ampere loop okay we of radius s Okay, so the Ampere Maxwell's law, which is written as the uh, closed integral of B dot TL is equal to mu naught I enclosed plus mu naught epsilon naught times integral of the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time dot dA. Now, because our region where we want to find the, the magnetic field is in the gap, so that means the enclosed charge will be zero because there is no charge, uh, there is no current flows, there, there is no current flows in the gap. Right? So that means I enclosed is equal to zero, so we're now left with these two terms. The left hand side, which is the closed integral of B dot DL, which is uh, by Ampere's law, is equal to B times 2 pi S. And this is now equal to mu naught, epsilon naught, times the integral of derivative of E with respect to time, wherein E would be sigma over epsilon. So in this case, this becomes. 1 over epsilon times uh, derivative of sigma with respect to time dot dA. Okay? Since in this case, uh, z hat, sorry, this is be z hat. Since sigma is uniform, so that means your sigma will now be equal to the total charge Q divided by the cross-sectional area, which is pi a squared. So that's the cross-sectional area of the circle. Okay, so using this equation, we now have uh, mu naught epsilon here, and then epsilon naught will be brought 
outside so that will cancel and then this sigma will be q over pi a squared so 1 over pi a squared will also be brought uh, uh, outside the integral so the constant of the, uh, the, uh, the constant in this term will now be equal to uh, mu naught over pi a squared and this is this become the integral of q with respect to time okay because the area vector here will be along the z direction as well so this dot product becomes a simple multiplication where dA uh, will now be just a simple differential. So this becomes dA. But we know that uh, derivative of Q with respect to time is I. Remember this is dQ dT or derivative of Q with respect to time which is a constant as mentioned here. So we can take this uh, parameter outside the integral as well. So this now becomes mu naught i over pi a squared. And this becomes integral of dA, which is just the area of the cross-section area, which is uh, area of the Ampere loop, which is 2 pi s, uh, pi s squared. So this is the area of the Ampere loop. So this is b times 2 pi s. This will give us the magnetic field to be equal to mu naught i. Pi will cancel. One of the s here will cancel as well. So this becomes mu naught i over 2 pi a s v hat. So as you will notice, uh, the resulting magnetic field varies with the distance of our point from the axis. So the farther you are from the axis, the larger the magnetic field. And it varies linearly. The rest is constant. So this is A, sorry, this should be A squared. Okay? So that's it. That is our solution to problem 3, uh, 7.34 of Griffith's fourth edition. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.